All right, people. Yes, we are on our Cab Eagle. 10,000 watts of peak power, baby. Um, so, first of all, a couple things. One, in the last, let's call it two weeks, I've gotten at least three people, maybe even four, maybe even five, that have said that they really like my, uh, my riding commentary. I'm very, quote unquote, easy going. Uh, my enthusiasm is contagious and that I'm really good at relating to um, everyday people. Uh, that's pretty cool. Because first of all, I am an everyday people um, and I am enthusiastic. So anyway, um, glad to hear that. Makes a lot of sense. I appreciate it. Um, really makes me feel good. Thank you. Um, all right. So, interesting video today. So, for those that follow my channel, I have ridden many electric dirt bikes, I call them. They're in the e-bike category, but come on. We're talking about the Suron, the Segway dirt bikes, um, and so forth. So, um, just to give you a little credibility uh, here, here for, for me, so I've ridden a Segway X160, I've ridden a Suron, I've ridden an Onyx RCR with the dirt kit, I've ridden an Enduro 5000, um, Chinese bike, um, and I've ridden this Cab Eagle. Uh, all these bikes are north of 3000 watts, most of them are 5 to 10,000 watts. Um, they have tremendous torque, most of them have upwards of 200 plus newton meters of torque. Most of them have like really beefy motorcycle type st type, uh, type tires. I can tell you the Segways do, the Surons do, this Cab Eagle does, the uh, Onyx does, if you get it with the, um, the dirt kit. So between those five bikes, electric dirt bikes I call them, and for sake of this video we're gonna call them electric dirt bikes, and I've owned 11 motorcycles, many of them in the dirt bike range. So that gives me a lot of, a lot of uh, experience, in my opinion, uh, a lot of credibility to answer these questions of who are these electric dirt bikes, glorified electric motorcycles with pedals, who are they really for, you know? And uh, I've got a newfound appreciation for them, having recently ridden the Suron and then now riding this Cab Eagle. I rode my Cab Eagle yesterday two and a half hours. Um, I rode it with a buddy of mine down this really awesome trail. We rode it along the beach. We rode it back. I then went doing some more trails. Um, it took me 10 miles just to get to him before I even rode the trails with him. So I probably rode like 35, 40 miles yesterday. Anyway, um, the capabilities of one of these bikes, I'm gonna kind of lump them all together. And if you consider the Onyx RCR with the dirt kit, it's it's there too. So putting them all together, I can say that they have tremendous, let's just call it power. First of all, they have tremendous torque in the low end, like you could pop a wheelie almost at, at will. Um, they have tremendous high speed power. Most of these bikes go north, they all go north of 40. Some of them go up to 60. Um, most of them have tremendous range. Most of them have tremendous off-road capabilities. That is handling uh, the, uh, the shocks and the suspension, the brakes, the hydraulic disc brakes to stop, uh, the thick tires that can pretty much go over anything. Um, so you got that. And then um, just the overall wow factor of these bikes, you know? If you're looking to ride an electric bike, then get an electric bike. An electric bike on the low end is like a Swagtron um, EV7 Plus for $700. It's got full suspension, a rear suspension. It's got seven gears, 350 watt motor. It's gonna get you wherever you wanna go. On the high end, uh, you know, and we're not talking about like high end downhill BMX style bikes or like high end Trek or Specialized. We're just talking about the everyday run of the mill bike. 
Then on the high end, you know, you've got, um, you know, one of those uh, Riesen Muller uh, or other high-end manufacturers like street bikes, right? So, or off-road bikes. Um, or you're talking about like 750 watt to 1200 watt, um, you know, bikes. That, I mean, that could, you could include in that the Super 73, the high-end ones, the uh, Area Rider, the 52 Volt, the Grizzly, the Hyper Scrambler, all that stuff, um, etc. So, if you're looking to get an electric bike, get one of those, that's an electric bike. It really has true biking capability, where you can actually pedal. Most of them have gears. Um, if you run out of power, you could seriously ride home uh, pedaling. These electric dirt bikes, they just have glorified pedals. The Suron doesn't even come with pedals. Um, this bike and the Onyx, I mean, the pedals are just a joke, you know? Like, really? I mean, come on, the sprocket is so small. Um, if you were to pedal, you'd have to stop pedaling at about eight miles an hour because that's how small the sprocket is. And it's just such a beast of a bike. I mean, this bike and the Onyx, I'm only talk about those for a second. They're probably 150 pounds. I don't know if you've ever tried to lift 150 pounds. It's impossible. So you have to, I just bought a ramp for this bike. Um, and I would have needed a ramp to get the uh, Onyx on my bike, on, on my back of my truck. But that, I had two people helping me, so I was able to do it. But you pretty much, you need like a motorcycle ramp, people. That's how freaking big and beefy and heavy these bikes are. So here's a, here we go. So all that said, as far as who should ride one of these, I'm probably gonna get tremendous hate for this. But while I am so unbelievably thankful that you don't need a license or registration for these bikes, just looking at it from an objective standpoint, so people don't go out there and kill themselves, you should have to get one. You should have to get a motorcycle license. I actually have a motorcycle license. But I mean, to ride these things, a lot of people ride them in the street. And you know, there's a lot of learning by getting a motorcycle license, the, the riding test and the, the written test. It tells you like <clears throat> where to ride <clears throat> so you're not in somebody's blind spot, how to ride with two people. You never ride side by side on bikes. You always ride catty corner to each other, <clears throat> etc. <cetera>. So <clears throat> there's a lot of learning. You know, and you really do get cut off a lot on these electric dirt bikes. Motors, uh, electric bicycles, you're in the bike lane all the time. A lot of people ride these electric dirt bikes in the, in the street. So I think you should have to get a, uh, a license, you know? Um, I know uh, a kid that's a junior in high school that has a lot of BMX dirt bikes, you know, uh, motorcycle bikes, uh, dirt bikes, and he's ridden uh, those a lot. Um, and he got one of these. God bless him, he's the right person for this. Um, I've had, again, a bunch of motorcycles, ridden a bunch of bikes. I even have a motorcycle license. Works for me, you know? But then, there are the average people that haven't ridden a bike in 20 years, don't get one of these. The average person that's never ridden a motorcycle, don't get one of these. Um, if you do get one and you don't have that kind of skill behind you, like say, here, here we go. A lot of people that get a motorcycle and a motorcycle license actually go to like a class. <clears throat> My brother went to a class where it like they teach you how to ride a freaking motorcycle. You can get yourself in a world of hurt if you don't know how to ride a motorcycle, you know? Um, so that being said, these are these electric dirt bikes are electric motorcycles. You know, this thing has so much freaking torque, it's unbelievable. Uh, this thing has, um, I was going 30 miles an hour through the dirt yesterday and I floored it and I peeled out. Um, this thing has about 50 miles an hour top speed. Um, it's just not meant for people that don't have motorcycle riding experience. It's just not. You're seriously gonna hurt yourself, you know? And I don't say that, uh, to be a dick, uh, I don't say that to discount anybody to get one that wants one. Look, you're gonna do whatever you want to do. I'm just trying to put some. I'm just trying to put some. Uh, I don't know what that guy was telling me. Anyway, I'm just trying to put some parameters around these bikes so people don't hurt themselves. You know, I can see a lot of people. I can see a lot of people hurting themselves on this stuff. So, who's it for? It's for 
um, you know, you could really go down to any age limit, a, a, you know, age minimum. Uh, you can go down to a 12 year old. If they have physical capabilities to handle one of these, again, these are big bikes. If, you, if it tips over, it's really heavy to pick up. Just to maneuver it takes some you know, upper body strength. Um, if you're a big 12 year old and you've ridden a bunch of motorcycles in the dirt, sure. If your parents are willing to afford it, sure. Now, the Segway X160 and the Suron are smaller than some of these other bikes. So I would advise getting one of those. Um, the Enduro, the, um, the Onyx, uh, this bike, the Cab, uh, they're a little bit bigger, you know? It's really like riding a motorcycle, like a 200cc off-road motorcycle. So get a smaller one if you're a younger person. If you're upwards of you know, your late teens and you've ridden motorcycles in the dirt and in the street for that matter, to open the floodgates, God bless you. Um, if, you've, uh, if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, if you're above 50, um, just be careful. There's some really agile, capable 50 year olds, you know? Uh, same thing with 60 year olds. But, you know, some people have, you know, I'm almost 50 myself, so when you get older, your eyes start to go a little bit, your reaction time goes a little bit, your strength, your grip strength. There's just a lot of capabilities that you start to lose. So I'm not saying that even an 80 year old couldn't ride one of these. If you're really, if you're really in great shape and you've got all your faculties and all your physical capabilities, God bless you. But if you're not, and you are starting to feel some of those um, hindrances, then don't get one of these bikes, you know? So I'm not gonna put an age limit on it, but as far as like the everyday person that meets the criteria I'm talking about, I would say 65 would probably be it. And those 60 year olds and even upper 50 year olds have to be kind of special, you know, uh, in, a, in a very agile, physical way. Um, so um, anyway, uh, can a woman ride one of these? Of course. Um, unlike, I guess the Segway X160 is definitely the smallest. The Suron's kind of small too. A woman who's about 5'8 could ride one, you know? Um, but these bigger ones, you probably, unless you're taller, gonna have a serious problem. Now, there are some women out there that are stronger than men, so I won't say that women don't have the physical capabilities to pick her up one of these or handle it, but the average woman, right? The average woman, these are probably not for, you know? These are for freaking guys that, uh, you know, wanna, you know, ride, a, ride around, you know, an adult playground toy, you know, that's what this is. It's an adult toy, but it's a very expensive, very capable toy. So, women can absolutely have it. Older people can absolutely have it, but again, you gotta be like that 10% that's got the right, you know, capabilities and characteristics to handle one of these. So, anyway, that all being said, um, be careful. Um, obviously, you're gonna get what you wanna get, but as a guy who's ridden now 28 electric bikes, five of these types of dirt bikes, 11 motorcycles, uh, take it from a guy who knows that these are not, uh, uh, these are no joke. That's what I'll put, it. that's how I'll say it. These, these electric dirt bikes are no joke. I mean, look at this, are you seeing this people? Like, Jesus Christ. The takeoff capability, the upper speed capability, the torque, it's just, these things are freaking beasts and they're not for just the average person, you know? So be careful, only get one if you think you can really handle it. Definitely test drive it before you buy it. And uh, that's it. Hopefully that helps. Just trying to provide some value. Uh, anyway, that'll do it. Thanks for watching. My subscriber count is starting to slow down and I don't understand why. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I get like 500 views average per video. I have some that are in the thousands and you know, most of them are about 500. And I still have only 15, 1-5% of my viewers are subscribed. Really? You know how long it takes you to subscribe? Maybe three seconds? Maybe even two seconds? Why not just subscribe? Subscribe, help me out. I would really, really appreciate it. Um, it helps put my videos at the top of, uh, you know, watch lists and all that, um, etc. So anyway, that'll do it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, please like, and uh, have a good day. God bless, peace out.